home stretch here, and today, and one more lecture. Uh, a few announcements relating to the uh, assignments, now that I have a view of how far we'll get through the material. So problem set one, which uh, was past due now, is due on Tuesday, but it's a nice relaxed grad course, so you know, we'll stay, still take them late if you want to uh, buck up and give them a shot. Uh, in problem set one, we looked at how to solve Poisson's equation. That was sort of our warm up. Um, now, problem set two, what you're going to get to do on there is your first density functional theory calculation, because we've built up all the necessary framework for that. Right now, it's just going to be a demonstration calculation, however, and it's going to be you're going to look at multiple states in a 3D quantum dot, just as a, a model to uh, put the method through its paces. But at least you'll have a fully functional DFT code by that point. And that's due this uh, coming Tuesday again. Problem set three is where I think things are really going to start to get interesting. In problem set three, you'll build up enough uh, capability to handle uh, a hydrogen molecule. And you'll have a chance uh, to uh, calculate, what are we going to calculate? The, uh, the usual stuff, the uh, bond length of the molecule, the uh, binding energy of the molecule, and the vibrational frequency. Right, all based on you know, the simple theory that we can just write down. And it constantly blows my mind, this part of it, but you're just going to calculate the thing, and darn it if it's not going to match the experiment. So it, it just blows my mind that that's actually possible. But it happens all the time. So uh, that's what you're going to get to do if you uh, stick through till problem set three. And that will be due then the following Wednesday. At that point, I'll not be teaching the course anymore, but you know, it'll take you about a week to do that, I think. And then there's a fourth assignment, which, uh, given the pace that we've uh, covered the material, we won't have really uh, time, I think, to make it do. You will have all the information needed to code it up, though. So I'm just going to require these first three, but there's a, I just feel like, well, you, you've got all this technology now. You might as well just finish the thing off if you're interested. If you want to carry out calculations in solids, in particular germanium solid calculation, we can see the... Uh, uh, Covalent bonds and the you know cohesive energy and all that. Uh, there'll be another problem set I'll put up there if you want to just you know continue on. And if for some reason you feel a need to make a good impression on me, please by all means <laughs> go ahead. All right. So um, great. So that that's kind of the uh, where we're going with the code. Um, now for today, uh, what our main topic is at the beginning is to finish this discussion we've been having of advanced minimization algorithms. And that is basically going to finish the material then that, that you need to finish the last assignment. On assignment two, we're just using simplest, steepest descents. That's fine. It's just not efficient enough really to do an interesting problem like the hydrogen molecule. So with the finishing up of the discussion of the advanced minimization algorithms today, you'll have enough uh, power in your code then to actually apply it in problem set three to that actual molecule. So I think that'll be uh, a good lot of fun to be able to uh, do that. Then um, there's a little side topic that we'll take a little detour on for a little while. Also help us understand uh, some of the structure in our algebra a little better. There's a certain uh, subtlety in extracting eigenstates from these calculations. It turns out there's a certain invariance in the uh, density functional theory energy expression which prevents us actually from directly getting the eigenstates out from this minimization. And we'll talk about that subtlety. What it means, though, is that if you want to look at the eigenstates and get the eigenvalues out, uh, you have to do a little bit of a, a manipulation on the, on the final data, some post-processing, once you've done the minimization. That's described, how to do it is actually described in problem set two, and you actually do that in the coming up problem set. And you're, you're told how to do it, but I thought it would be nice for you guys to know what you were doing, in addition to how to do it. So we'll take a little 15-minute discussion detour on that. And then, at that point, you basically have everything you need to calculate energies and densities and eigenstates and eigenvalues for you know, whatever system might be of interest to you. So that's nice. Then that pretty much, I guess, would finish up the uh, material for the course up to the first three uh, problem sets and give you a complete coherent picture of uh, density practical density functional calculation. But one can always optimize things further, and we have a little bit of time. So I'm going to uh, describe some further optimizations one could make to really tweak up the code. And these actually are necessary to carry out the germanium solid calculation. So these would go on to that fourth assignment. 
if you're interested in carrying it out. And basically what it's going to boil down to is uh, two different tricks that are going to allow us, allow us to save a factor of about half a million in the memory requirements for carrying out that germanium solid calculation. So it's quite substantial. Uh, and you can imagine, you know, we're probably going to need this to get that germanium thing on there if it's going to be a million times more than we could, could handle uh, currently. So then that's what the uh, rest of the lecture will finish up on. I'm not sure we'll uh, finish the discussion of both of the optimizations that uh, you know, combine together to give us these savings, but we'll see how far we get today, and then we'll just finish it up in the last lecture, the remaining parts. Okay, so right on into the agenda on the advanced minimization algorithms. If we recall where we had left off last time, I had basically gotten to the point where I'd shown you the overall minimization technique we'll be using, which is uh, preconditioned conjugate gradients uh, to solve generic minimization problems. And my sort of generic statement of the problem is this. I'm minimizing over some column vector of real coefficients of some real function of those coefficients. And the algorithm proceeds as follows. As you recall, you have some initial guess for the solution. And then you proceed iteratively. In the first phase of the iteration, you compute the search direction that you're going to move along carry out the minimization. And we calculate that by looking at the gradient, pre-treating it a little bit with this uh, preconditioning matrix, which you might remember is the model of the inverse of the Hessian. If we had the exact inverse Hessian here, we'd solve the problem in one step, basically. But we don't, so we have some more machinery involved. Uh, so the search direction is that preconditioned gradient, this is called, plus some magic mixture of the previous search direction. And the point of that magic, again, is beyond the scope of this course. It's about a 25-minute discussion. If we have time left over in the last lecture, we'll do it. <laughs> I, I don't think we will. Uh, basically, what it accomplishes, again, is that once you've minimized in a certain direction, any further optimizations won't project into the direction that you've done. So as iterations go by, you've successively solved, you've solved the problem in successively larger and larger subspaces. Um, in any event, once you've got that search direction, we have to decide how far to go along it. And so we decided that we'll do what's called line minimization, or I like to call it Lindman for short. And basically, what you do is you find the alpha that would minimize the energy just at least along this one search direction that you've picked out. Once you find that ideal alpha, you update the state of your system to that new point, and then you're ready to iterate. That's the overall algorithm. Now this begs two questions. The first is, in particular for us, well, what are we going to use for this K, this preconditioner? And secondly, how do we actually carry out this third step here? How do we actually find the best point along a line in our, in a, in that, I think, convenient. 